Welcome everyone, this is Andres Restar, and this is going to be kind of like a Xenoblade Chronicles 2 all-encompassing refresher combat guide. So I've done several tips videos for the combat guide in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They're all like 8 or 9 months old, but since the Torn of Golden Country DLC is coming out, I've noticed a lot of people are playing Xenoblade 2 again, a lot of people are asking me questions on the older tips videos, so I figured it'd be a good idea to come out with a refresher video to get people back up to speed with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and also so I can actually make a video where I talk about everything all-encompassing in real time. I haven't done that before, so I'm doing that right now. And hopefully a lot of you guys who are coming back into Xenoblade 2 or coming to Xenoblade 2 for the first time will find this video really, really useful. So, yeah, forgive the editing. This is going to be a really quick video. But, you know, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to turn off my actual camera now because I just want to, you know, get the show on the road. Um, yeah, forgive me for making this the rest of this video faceless, but... Uh, I just want to show gameplay and me telling you how to play this game. So, like I said, this is a combat guide, right? And full disclaimer, there will be some minor spoilers here in terms of blades. Nothing that I think will ruin the story for you at all, but you are going to see some blades you kind of unlock later into the game. So just I'm just giving you that warning, that warning right now. Now, here we have a tombstone. What we're going to be doing is actually, I'm going to be fighting a boss. I'm going to tell you guys all the different tricks and techniques to beat the powerful bosses of Xenoblade 2 by fighting this boss right here. So with tombstones, you get these tombstones whenever you beat an actually unique monster. So the way it works is you can actually just... Every time you beat a monster, you can go to their tombstone and ask to fight them again. You summon them, you can fight them again. It's a great way to, I guess, do time trials, right? Or also just experiment with the battle system and the mechanics, and also just gain experience. So, so that's what we're going to be doing right here, sort of testing out the mechanics. And he's going to spawn right here, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually jump off, because I don't want to fight him right up there in that narrow space, because what if... See, you see him running up there. I don't want to fight anyone up there, because the thing is, is that if I'm fighting him right there in that narrow space, one of my... Um, allies might fall off and they fall off I won't have them in the fight and that'll be really really bad so I'm gonna go and meet them down this mountain over here in an open space so we can have a nice clean you know fight where there's no one getting in the way no no other monsters no other cliffs like it's just gonna be our my team versus this dude and it's gonna work out hopefully so before we jump into the fight I just want to point out that I in my team there are well, technically I have 10 blades if you count Pyra. Oh, he's, he already wants to fight right now. Okay. But anyways, I have eight up to all eight types in this actual party. Because I'm going to need all eight types to actually do all the blade combos I want to create as many orbs as I can for chain attacks. So the thing about chain attacks is that you want to have as many orbs in the chain attack to do as much damage as possible. And that's the thing about fighting bosses in Zealot Chronicles 2. If you want to do a whole bunch of crazy damage, like millions and millions of damage millions and millions of points of damage, you need to have a lot of orbs to do a lot of damage during the chain attack. That's how you do it. So, I have all the types in this party to give me the opportunity to get as many orbs as possible. Now, the first thing I want to show you guys is, I guess, uh, just building up your special meter. So, notice at the bottom right how I have my anchor shot, my rolling smash, and my double spinning edge, and then one blank spot. That blank spot is my actual special. So I want to build it up as I, and I'll show you how to build it up in a moment, but first I'm going to tell you guys about death. So I just died, right, um, and I lost a bar on my, on the top left meter. You need a whole bar to be revived on the top left meter. So here's the thing, when I do my chain attack, I want to make sure I actually beat the boss. I want to make sure I beat the boss with that chain attack, because when I use a chain attack, I will waste all three bars on my meter, and if I die... I won't be able to be revived and that'll be game over. So whenever you do a chain attack, it's usually a good idea to make sure you finish off the enemy with that chain attack because you'll be vulnerable right after. So now let's actually build up a special and get started. So I, at the end of my auto attack, I'm going to press my, my anchor shot and notice how I got a little blue circle, right? Um, and notice how I press my special right there at the end once I land that attack. It's really important to always press an art or a switch as you land an attack because you will build up your special meter even more and your momentum and your you know your your actual meter so it's important to always do that i died again i'm just gonna let my teammate revive me yeah hopefully you know we actually beat this in one try um this boss can kill me there is a bit of a threat level here but i'm also going easy on him because i want to make sure 
I actually, you know, get this done. So hopefully I can build up my meat. Okay, there, look. So I started the, the, the combo off with a fire. So notice how fire was highlighted. And now Neo just did a tier 2 or above water special. So we are going to move down the blade combo tree and do it again. And now notice that Steam Explosion is available on the right. So Tora can actually do a tier 3 or higher fire special. And we notice we can do either ice or fire in the, on the blade combo tree on the right. So we're going to go for fire. Or actually, he switched to ice. So we're going to do ice. Let's just do ice. And this is going to be bring out our first orb. So... The final special you use on your blade combo tree is going to be the color of the orb that you get. And you want to get all the different, as many different colored orbs as possible. So now we have an ice orb rotating around this guy. Now, I'm going to show you another little trick. Alright, so I'm going to do my anchor shot. Get out some potions. And then I'm going to press the special. Now, notice how I can move around freely while Pyro is attacking. So basically, whenever you do a tier 1 or 2 special, your blade is does the attack and you're free to move around very quickly. So if there are potions around and you're doing a tier 1 or 2 special, you should take that moment to run around and get potions. It's a quick way to get potions and you're not really doing anything else during that time. So it's just an efficient way to go about doing things. Like, so I, I, I recommend doing that. I'm going to do it right now. See? Like there, there we go. Yeah, that was a waste of a um, special, but don't worry. I could probably build it up pretty quickly again. So here's another thing. To build up your arts quickly, flick the stick every time you land an auto attack. You can build up your arts a lot quicker that way. And I'm going to actually go ahead and start doing this blade combo. So pick up these potions real quick. You know, I was able to run quickly for, for a moment because Pyre was doing an attack. Right? And if I want to build up my arts quickly, I can always do that little flick trick I just showed you. I'll show you one more time. But I'll, I'll go ahead and waste all my arts so I can show you. Alright, so watch this. Flick, flick, flick. I always flick forward. It's the easiest way. Every time. And you build up a lot quicker that way. However, um, if you want to do an even stronger art, what you want to do is always do your arts at the end of a, of the other uh, of the auto attack. So the auto attack usually happens in sets of three. That's the best way to do it. All right, let's get this off. All right, now we got the fire combo off. So just to summarize, when a blade is doing a tier one or two special, you could run them really quickly to pick up potions, right? Um, if you want to build your arts really quickly, just flick your stick forward after the first auto attack. And if you want your arts to hit a little harder, do your art on the third auto. Okay, it's kind of hard to see everything right now because Mr. Whatever is doing something annoying. But if you want to build your arts quickly, just flick the stick forward at the end of, it, of every auto attack. And you can build your arts really quickly that way. But if you want to do the stronger auto attacks like I was saying before, do an art on the third auto attack. There we go. And also... Always make sure to press arcs at the end of every attack. Every time you connect with your weapon, you can either do a switch or a um, or an art, and you will get that blue circle, and it'll build up your special meter quicker. All right, now let's go for wind. I can do wind. All right, I just need to build this up a little bit. I'll wait on the third auto attack to get more oomph out of my arts. There's a little bit more damage that way. Do it again, and then right as I land this attack, I'm going to do my... Oh, wait. Alright, there we go. Get that blue circle. Here we go. We're going to get that wind orb now. Now, I understand the blade combo tree might be a little confusing, so this time I'm going to focus on just explaining the blade combo tree, because I understand that, that it can be kind of a mess. So, let's go for gravity. So, Nia's going to do a tier 1 or above dark art. Or special, I should say. So now notice she, the dark symbol on the top right is highlighted. I have two options. I can go up and do light, or I can go down and do dark again. So let's go ahead and switch to Pyra. And now with Pyra, I'm going to build up my special meter a little bit. Always connect the art once my blade hits. And then I'm going to switch. Oh, I messed up. but Switch into Mithra, and now Mithra can do a light attack. So let's go ahead and do that light attack. I'm doing it right as I land my blade on the enemy. 
And now we did light, so now we're going to move up. And now our last option is to hit lightning. So in order to make sure we land... Oh, lightning's already available, so let's go ahead and do lightning now. But notice how there's a timer at the top right. Every time you land a, a colored special, your meters... There's a timer. You want It's a timer for you to move on to the next combo on the blade combo tree. If that timer runs out, you have to reset the blade combo. So now we have several... We have several orbs flying around now. We have fire, we have ice, we have light, and we have um, wind. So what can we go for now? I think we need to get at least one more orb to ensure full burst. So I haven't even explained what a full burst yet is. So let me explain what a full burst is. A full burst is a more powerful chain attack, and you need usually, unless there's a certain, you have a certain other character fighting, you need to have at least five orbs circling around to do a full burst, and when you break all five orbs, you can go into full burst mode, and that's how you do the most amount of damage during a chain attack. It's really the best way to do things. Alright, now I'm going to switch to um, Perun so I can go and do my share of the ice. Notice how I'm on the ice is highlighted, because we started the blade combo as ice. I ran out of time there. Um, that's my bad. But, uh, oh well. Okay, so it looks like Knee is dead. It's not good. We gotta get we gotta get our stuff together. Let's start off with stone. All right. Um, we're gonna be going for ground. We're gonna go for a ground combo. I'm gonna get some potions out there, and then. Yeah, this is good. So now um, we should have an opportunity to get a ground to get a ground attack on. So I went from ground to fire tier two or higher, and now we need a tier three ground attack, which is gonna come from Tora. So one of the random thing I want to point out: notice how we have that water symbol next to his name. That water symbol does not mean his type. What that water symbol means? That means what sort of art will actually weaken him the most. Um, so if you are using water arts, it will do more damage. But let's get that Mega Eruption off, make sure, ensure we get that Blade combo finished, and we should have a Ground Orb now floating around him. And we'll have five orbs, and we could probably finish this game. Or this fight, I mean. But yeah, if you want to do a little bit more additional damage, if you see a, 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 an elemental symbol next to an enemy's name, you want to use arts of that symbol to do a little bit more damage. I think it does about two times as much damage per art, but keep in mind, it's, it's more important to focus on blade combos. But alright, let's finish this game before someone dies. Alright, so now we're going to chain attack mode. Now, don't worry, I can take a moment to explain things before we move forward. Um, so, now I'm going to put up the type chart one more time. And this is important, this is the really important part. This is why we had all the different types in the party, so we have as many options as possible to break the different elemental orbs. So notice how the type chart is in pairs. There are eight types and there are four pairs, right? You have light and dark, fire and water, ice and wind, and lightning and earth. So the pairs break each other. So fire beats water, water beats fire, light beats dark, dark beats light, ice beats wind, and wind beats ice, and lightning beats earth, and earth beats lightning. So let me kind of show you an example. Now, in order to move forward, there are different rounds in the chain attack, right? You need to break at least one orb per round, and if you don't, the chain attack will end, and you won't be able to do as much damage as you can. So... For this first one, I want to ensure we break an orb. So what I'm going to do is do the opposite of either ice or wind. Notice how they're glowing. It's hinting to me that I have the ability to to crack those orbs. So I'm going to go ahead and use Perun and, and smash that wind orb. So here we go. It's going to do some significant damage. Right? Now, notice how it's cracked now. Right? If we hit it one more time, it will break. So now I have the option... Well... If I press water, I'll crack the fire orb. If I press lightning, I'll crack the earth orb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and break the water orb. Actually, what sh should I should I break the water orb? Hmm. Let's break the water orb. All right. Alright, so now, what's interesting is having double typing uh, gives you a better chance at breaking orbs. So, for example, I have two ice 
types, right? So I was able to crack the wind orb. So now that I have a second ice type in the back, I can ensure that I will break that wind orb right there. So I'm going to go ahead and use my ice type. So it's good to have one or two repeated types so you can make sure you break an orb throughout your rounds. So here we go. We're going to have ice and break that wind, that wind orb right now. All right, there we go. We broke one, so we guarantee that we move on to round two. Make sure you get those beads. It's always help. It always helps out. So um, let's go ahead and crack that ice orb with wind. Now to ensure that you move on to round three, we need to break another orb. So what I'm gonna do, just make my life easier. I can rest easy. I'm gonna break that fire orb with water right now. All right, so now we're guaranteed to move on to round three. Now, I, I'm free to just damage whatever I want, so I'm going to go ahead and do that Earth against that Lightning right now. And crack that one significantly as well. All right. All right, now let's crack that Ice Orb so we, we, we know for sure we're going to be in good shape. All right. Now, let's use Lightning on that Earth Orb. So now we have nothing to worry about. We're definitely going to full burst no matter what we do. Now, let's go ahead and smash that Lightning Orb. Alright, now let's just go ahead and use Pyra because she's pretty strong herself. And let's get this full burst started. Alright, notice that, see that damage multiplier right there. Now hopefully we should be able to kill him with this. Here we go. Overkill start. Yeah, we definitely wrecked him. And that's how you do a full burst, guys. And that's how you're going to be able to do an insane amount of of damage all right so that's basically it guys i think i pretty much got everything but let me just quickly summarize right so you have the typings right you, you, you i showed you the type charts right there they come in pairs the opposites break each other during the actual chain attack you want to make sure you get at least five orbs before you go into a chain attack and when you do a chain attack you want to make sure you kill them because afterwards you'll be left vulnerable Right. If you do a little flick trick to, to build up your auto attacks, it's a great way to build up your your arch really quickly. When you do land an attack, either auto or art, you want to, or even special, you want to make sure that you press another one as your weapon actually connects with the enemy. That way, you can link into another attack or switch, and you will build up your special meter even more quickly. It's very important, so you can have the option to do more specials more quickly. Now, if you need more time to build up your specials, right? If you feel like you're running out of time when you set that, that timer at the top make sure to do a break and topple and that will topple the enemy and it'll reset the timer and just to re-explain the blade combo tree right you when if you need a tier one special to initiate the blade combo tree right and then after that to continue on to the second round of the blade combo tree you need a tier two or higher and then for the final round you need tier three or higher and like i said if you want to build those specials up connect your arts link them with 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 you know your auto attack and your switches always press an art or a switch as you connect your weapon doesn't matter if it's an art uh, a special an auto attack or a switch you always want to do another attack or switch as you land your weapon on the enemy and that will build up your special meter even more and another random thing I, I, i'll just bring up one more time is that when you do a tier one or two special you your actual blades doing the attack so let's that gives you more time to run around very quickly and collect potions to make sure you have more more life and i think that's pretty much everything guys if you guys have any questions put them in the comments below if you want to see my individual tits videos for the different concepts i covered eight or nine months ago you can go ahead and check out those videos as well I'll put links to all of them in the description below and if you're looking for help on the Torner golden country dlc i will be putting out a video for that in about a week or so maybe a little sooner i gotta play through the game it hasn't even come out yet so you know keep that in mind but i'll be putting that out relatively soon and thank you so much for listening and watching guys i know this video was just kind of like a very simplistic just run through explain everything with no edit special edits or anything but hopefully i explained everything relatively low, relatively well and you guys understood it so if you're new here make sure to subscribe if you want to check out a whole bunch of awesome nintendo content including tips
tips, videos, theories, and discussions. And if you, well, if you like the video, make sure to leave a like. Anyways, everyone, thank you so much, and I'll see you all really soon. Bye.